people. Today I'm going to be giving you a vlog slash story time about my experience in the UK. Now as most of you know, I started my channel, or my reaction channel anyway, two years ago and I recorded my first ever video in my aunt and uncle's London apartment. And I feel like maybe that's the reason that the UK has resonated so much with me because it's basically like the beginning of this new passion and hobby or career that I've started on, on YouTube. Since then my love for the UK has just grown and festered and blossomed into something I never expected it to be and obviously back in the days whenever I was filming my reactions in the UK I didn't really know what I wanted to do on YouTube whether it be vlogging or reacting but one thing was for sure I definitely did not know <laughs> what I was doing. Which is why the format of this video is not going to be your stereotypical vlog. Yes it's going to include clips from my experience while I was there, but I'm going to have to narrate them because one, I was too shy to actually speak on camera at the time, and two, the clips are just kind of sporadic and random, which I feel like represents me a lot too. I just feel like you guys would be interested in hearing about my experience in the UK, but also I really just want to share everything I went through and experienced. Traveling alone at the ripe age of 18 by myself. So yeah. Subscribe if you're new here, make sure you like this video, and let's get right into I Spent the Summer in Europe, episode 2, UK. So I have some photos and videos that I'm just gonna talk about and also include a bunch of clips like it's basically gonna flow like a story, hence the story time title, but it's also a vlog because the videos I took were in real time. If that makes sense. I don't know. Whatever. Here we go. So in the last video I talked to you guys about my experience from flying from Dallas, Texas to Europe and my experience with all that. The trouble at border patrols, my experience with the rude French people, and everything. So now that brings us to present time in this video. First thing I want to talk about is the UK border. That was probably the worst experience of my life. Not even being dramatic, not joking. Having to cross as an American, as a foreigner, across the UK border through the airport, the worst experience ever. <sighs> Literally, I had no water. There was no cell phone reception. Like, I couldn't call anyone, text anyone, get on any of my socials. First world problems, I know. It was hot, there was no air conditioning. I was shoulder to shoulder with people, like strangers from places they didn't even speak English. It was just an experience I didn't recommend for anyone, and I don't well, I'm gonna have to go through again, but if I could avoid it, I would not experience that again. I was in line for about four hours, and then once I actually got to like the the little booth area where the lady's like stamping your passport and like asking you a bunch of terrorist questions basically, once I crossed, it was like, what the heck did I just experience? And the whole actually crossing from the queue or line to being in the UK, was like a five minute talk with the border patrol lady. So you wait for four hours just to talk to someone for five minutes, basically. Ridiculous. But I do understand that that's very important in the whole process to ensure the protection of the public. So I guess it is worth it. So once I finally crossed the border, I met my aunt for the first time and we basically just talked about how long the wait was. And then she directed me onto a, tra not a train, but like, a bus, a subway. I don't know what you guys would call whatever this was. It was like underground, but it looked like a mix between a bus and a train. It was weird. So we got on the bus train, we started to move towards Barking Station, and I spent the night there in their apartment. London apartments are very, very small or at least the one that I stayed in was. It reminds me a lot of New York City, which I think is another reason I really love the UK. But anyways, so it's the next morning and obviously like I just, I'm an American girl who's traveling for the first time. The first thing I wanna do is explore the city. I wanna get out and see everything, do as much as I can. And mind you, this is the very first day of me being in the country. And I, my day, now that I think about it, was like crazy. Like the first day of me being in the United Kingdom was an experience. So I woke up super early, like 7 a.m., got dressed, showered, did all that stuff. I walk across the park to the Barking Station train situation. And surprisingly, it was pretty easy to figure out by myself. Though there were a lot of construction and like detours that you had to take sometimes for some of the places. But on the first day, I got to my destination fairly easy and there were no troubles with me understanding the routes. Okay. 
Westminster, change for the Jubilee Line. Exit for Westminster Abbey, the Houses of Parliament and Riverboat Services from Westminster Pier. So the first place I went, I don't know the name of it, but it's where the Big Ben is, the Eye, and all that stuff. It was full of tourists. One thing, if I can regret anything, is that I went there alone because of the pictures. I had to use like this flimsy little tripod to take pictures of myself and people had to like walk around me and like split up. It was, <sighs> but there were some very nice people who would offer to take my picture. So that's cool too. So after I got my fill of the bridge that's by Big Ben and the Eye, I walked across, I guess to the lower part. I walked to the area and down the stairs where you could get into it and like actually ride it. But it was super hot that day so I went into a McDonald's. And this is where like I feel like the realization that I was like in a foreign country took off because the menu was ridiculous. The people could not understand them. There were loads of, it was like so full. The, it was like this small little room with hundreds of people. It was so full. That's unlike any other McDonald's I've ever been in. And I've been in, I keep using New York City as an example, but New York City is the biggest city that I've ever been in. And even those McDonald's is, McDonald's, whatever, aren't as cramped as the one in London was. I do remember that the menu was not the same. So I just picked something random that sounded good, probably like a cheeseburger and got like a orange slushy or something and left. After I went out of the McDonald's, I walked around a little bit and I came across this like underground arcade area. was so weird like it's literally just like a hole in the ground with steps and like I didn't know what I was walking into but I saw a bunch of people walking in so I was like let me check it out and I go down there and then like once I got in there there's just lights everywhere so I was like what the heck is this place it was basically like an underground Dave and Buster's if you guys know what that is so that was cool explored there walked around some I don't think I played any games but it was still just cool to to be there which I feel like is a lot of what my trip was. It wasn't necessarily that I did a bunch of stuff. It wasn't like I spent a bunch of money on really anything. It was just being there that was like so, I don't even know the word to describe it. It was just about being present there that was so otherworldly, I guess. Now I've seen Big Ben, I've seen the Eye, I've gotten my McDonald's, checked around this arcade area place. So I just wanted to explore more of the city. So I start walking around the street and somehow, I'm at Kensington Palace, I, no, no, no. What was that place called? It's the place where like the queen does her work, I think people were saying. I don't know the actual name, I'm sorry, no offense or whatever, if this is an important place. I wasn't even trying to get there. Literally, I just, I was just walking around and I ended up at these like golden gates. Do I need to be in the center? Ugh. 
And I must say, this was another moment where I was like, ugh, I'm alone. Because everyone had like a friend there, or they were with their family, taking pictures, having people take pictures of them. And here I am with my freaking, what do you call that extender thing that you hold with your phone? Selfie stick. Selfie stick in pictures of myself at the Queen's Palace. <laughs> But it was still a great experience, so I don't care. So yeah, I think I spent like an hour or two just walking around and looking at those weird security guard people with the big hats who like walk around so formationative. I know that's not a word, but you know what I'm trying to say. Very like stiff like walking like this with their red outfits. The stereotypical like king's guards that you see in movies and on TV were actually there, but they also had like official police looking people with like machine guns toting around outside too. And the walk was weird. Like they would literally do this. I know that was pretty close up so you couldn't fully see what I was doing, but it was very swift turns. So like I said, I spent about an hour or two at the palace, if you call it a palace. And then I just started walking around again. The thing I did notice is London or Westminster, everything is like in a circle. So it's like everything is so accessible by foot. So that's how I just kept jumping from place to place on my very first day of being in London, I guess. So anyways, like I was saying, I walk a few blocks and come across like these, the what do you call them? Like bike chariots? They're basically like transportation bikes but like you have to pay for them. I think they're like a touristy kind of thing. So there was this guy, we made eye contact, he seemed nice, so I was like, um, can I ride around in your bicycle chariot? And he was like, yeah. I was like, how much is it? He, I think he said like 40 or 50 pounds, which is expensive, but he did take me all around, so I guess it was worth it. And he took pictures of me. This is what? What's me?
I think the best part about Europe, aside from just like the the essence of the country, is definitely the architecture. Like whenever I came back home and got back to America and saw these dusty ass, lame architectured buildings, literally just cubes on the ground, I was just like, <laughs> Where's the flavor? Where's the flavor in this? Like, it's just, everything about Europe is so beautiful and I cannot wait to be back again. I'm coming back, I think, in the summer, so yeah. One thing I wanna point out that I thought was cool is that y'all have like stoplights for the bike lane. In America, bikes don't stop for anything. I mean, you might stop if you want to, like at a stop sign and look both ways. If you really wanted to and there's no one coming, you could actually roll past a red light. Also, something that's really cool, the whole driving on the other side of the road thing. A couple times I caught myself almost like walking into traffic. So I would look like this and there would be cars coming like behind me. So I almost lost my life a couple times in the UK. But anyways, like I was saying, the guy drove me around so far, so much. It was like a 30 minute ride, maybe even more. So again, 40 to 50 pounds for the ride was expensive. But as I said, he did take pictures of me and I literally did get to see the entire like borough, I guess you could call it, of uh, Westminster. And he explained a lot of different like places. Like he went into depth about the importance of some church, I don't remember the name. If I do remember, I'll put like the name on the screen. He went above and beyond for me to actually like, I guess appreciate what I was seeing on another level than just like seeing it. But anyways, the ride came to an end. I walked back to some subway station. Again, it wasn't very hard to navigate the subways of London. Like with my GPS, everything was basically mapped out for me. That's another thing. Like you'll never get lost using the UK subway because they have huge circle signs of saying where you are. And then there's like charts of like where you're trying to go and the different routes you can take. If I can do it, you can do it. So yeah, I get back on the train, make my way back to Barking Station, walk across the park where I was attacked by ducks. Cause I thought I had food, which I didn't. Made it back to the apartment, had some dinner, and that marked the end of my first day in London. My name's Favor. I hope I can continue this series. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe episode two will be out next week where I talk about my second day in London, and I hope you are here to see that. Subscribe if you're new here, like this video. Bye bye.